In this video, we explain how to draw the molecular orbital theory diagram for heteronuclear diatomic molecules by illustrating this with the CO molecule. Okay, so the idea is that until now, we have been uh, drawing the uh, MO diagrams for homonuclear diatomic molecules like C2, N2, O2, and so forth. Uh, but there are some interesting differences when you actually uh, consider two different atoms. Okay, so this is still a diatomic molecule, but it has two different atoms. So always the first thing that we think uh, about is the electronic configurations of the atoms. Okay, so uh, the carbon electronic configuration is helium uh, 2s2, 2p2. And then for oxygen, we have uh, two more electrons, 2s2, 2p4. Right, the next thing that we do is draw uh, the energy di diagram in which we place the atoms uh, uh, to the sides of the molecular orbital diagram. Okay, so that would be uh, energy. We are going to put here uh, the orbitals of carbon. Here you will have the orbitals of oxygen. And somewhere in the middle, we'll have um, the orbitals of the molecule. Right, so um, carbon, we'll look at the, at the uh, electronic structure. It's going to be equal to um, 2s, and then your 2p's. And then uh, oxygen, uh, we'll put here the electrons. And then oxygen is going to be a 2s2, 2p4. Okay. So the first uh, difference that you see here, uh, when you consider a heteronuclear diatomic molecule, is that the energy levels of the separated atoms are actually different. Okay? We know that the uh, nuclear charge in oxygen is higher than in carbon. So uh, uh, those orbitals, those electrons are actually more tightly held in the case to the nucleus in the case of oxygen than carbon, and that stabilizes the orbitals, which means that the energy uh, uh, of the uh, oxygen orbitals is offset, okay, lowering energy with respect to uh, the carbon uh, orbitals. Okay, and again, this, this makes a uh, uh, this, this has some physical meaning. Okay, now uh, the question is, well, how do we actually draw then uh, the molecular orbital diagram? Well, so here you're going to have exactly the same combinations, linear combinations between atomic orbitals that you did in the case of, say, CO or O2. Uh, something interesting in the CO molecule is that the carbon and oxygen atoms belong to, different, to, to the two different classes uh, for the orbital ordering, right? Uh, if you remember from prior videos, the way that the uh, uh, molecular orbitals are ordered in energy for the uh, boron-2, carbon-2, and nitrogen-2 uh, molecules is different uh, than oxygen and fluorine. Okay, in this case, it's not obvious which of the two orders uh, uh, we should draw, draw, but we actually know from experiment uh, that uh, CO follows the order of the carbon, uh, boron, and nitrogen uh, series. Okay, so when we draw this, uh, the way that we do it is as follows. Well, in this case, uh, for the uh, sigma-2s bonding and anti-bonding, uh, actually that doesn't matter. Yeah, you have sigma 2s, sigma 2s antibonding. Okay, but then again, uh, here's where the uh, difference between the carbon and the oxygen series would be, and we know that for CO, uh, the molecule follows uh, the carbon ordering. Okay, so first you have the pi bondings, pi 2px, pi 2py, then the sigma 2pc bonding, and then you will have the antibondings. First the pi's, 2py, and then the sigma to be seen. Okay, so now we have uh, all of the uh, molecular orbitals, and we just have to uh, fill these orbitals with uh, the electrons of the atom. Okay, so in this case, we're going to have two electrons right there, two electrons right there. Okay, and then we have six electrons for the uh, p orbitals that we have to distribute into these molecular orbitals. Okay, so that will be the first one, two, three, four, five and six. Right, so there are a few things that we can learn about the CO molecule from this molecular orbital diagram, and that is that in CO uh, we have a bond order of three, okay? And the molecule will be diamagnetic, and these are things that we actually know. That is that when you look at the um, uh, Lewis structure, you also have here a triple bond, okay, which agrees nicely with the uh, 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 concept here that we actually have uh, a bond order of three. Okay, and the molecule is diamagnetic because there's no unpaired electronic spins. Now, uh, before we actually uh, close this up, close off this, this, this discussion, something that is interesting is that um, uh, we can think a little bit more deeply 
about the combinations of the atomic orbitals that give uh, those molecular orbitals, right? So if we take, for example, just this part of the molecular diagram, we can say that the molecular orbital uh, that is bonding sigma 2s is just going to be an in-phase uh, constructive uh, interference between this orbital and that orbital. Okay, so that would be uh, the 2s of the carbon atom plus the 2s of the oxygen atom. Okay, that is uh, what means bonding. But something interesting uh, that is different from heteronuclear diatomic molecules uh, uh, and homonuclear diatomic molecules is that in homonuclear diatomic molecules, uh, the two orbitals are at the same energy, and they contribute equally uh, uh, to the bonding and anti-bonding orbitals. However, you can clearly see in this diagram how uh, this bonding orbital is closer in energy to that uh, two-way orbital for oxygen than it is for carbon. And the way that this is actually going to uh, appear here in these linear combinations is that now these coefficients of the linear combinations are not one and one, as they are in all homonuclear atomic molecules. Instead, we're going to have coefficients, say, C1 and C2. But again, because this is a bonding orbital, we're talking about that orbital, this coefficient is going to be greater than that because, again, notice that um, uh, this 2s orbital of oxygen is closer in energy than that uh, than the, uh, to the bonding. And again, that means that when you uh, construct that orbital from these two, this one is going to have more uh, implication in, in that uh, molecular orbital than that one. Okay, conversely, when, you, when we actually draw uh, the mo uh, linear combinations for the anti-bonding molecular orbital, uh, then you will have that this is going to be equal to Sc minus uh, 2SO. Okay, that's how we'll, how we'll, we'll, we'll build the uh, anti-bonding uh, ML. And here you're also going to have coefficients that I'm going to call 3C uh, and 3, 4. Okay, but in this case, it turns out that the anti-bonding orbital okay, is uh, more represented by the 2S uh, uh, orbital of carbon than the 2S orbital of oxygen. So that what that would mean is that C3 for this orbital is actually greater than C4. Okay, so that is kind of uh, uh, the differences and similarities between a homonuclear diatomic molecule and heteronuclear diatomic molecules with an application to the CEO molecule.